All right, right, everybody. Now it's time to get into episode eight of Hellstrom. Now this episode, all I can say is, damn, like <laughs> what a crazy plot twisting into this episode. And quite frankly, like up until like the last 10 minutes of this episode, I was thinking like, oh, you know what? It looks like they could wrap this up. But knowing that they had two more episodes, I knew something crazy was going to happen at the end and it surely delivered. And I'll be 100% honest, I've said it in the previous episodes as well, while this is, you know, on Hulu, it doesn't give you that premium channel feel, it gives you a little bit not, you know, between the gap of premium channel and basic channel, as far as with production, as far as with the script and everything, but overall, I'm still enjoying it, and I can't wait to get through the last two episodes, because, like, after this episode, like, they're bringing on all the action, but... Let me break, uh, let me get into episode eight, break things down, and then um, give you some thoughts about it. Now, number one, this episode is titled Underneath, and the synopsis reads Relationships deepen and st as stakes increase. To save a life, Hastings and Anna must do the unthinkable. Gabrielle and Damien journeys to a childhood home in search for an old relic. A mother loses a son, but gains a hear. Now, that is a crazy synopsis. And if you don't know anything else re by reading that, you have to kind of start thinking like, who are they talking about here and what's really at stake, stake here? Um, so it's a lot. But the beginning of this episode didn't channel its traditional style of, of, of how the episodes were. Didn't have no flashback scene and some a soft opening with a bang, whatever it may be. This one jumped right into the drama where episode seven left off. So I knew this episode was going to do, be different because it just felt different coming into it. Um, but going back into episode seven, I talked about the relic. Now, this episode, Damon explained that this relic, a knife, his dad's knife, is a, the only weapon that he cannot heal from. Now, we know Damon has the ability to heal. Um, and now this is the first time we've seen him, uh, you know, talk about something that is actually his kryptonite, shall I say, where he says, like, this weapon he could not heal from. It is dad's weapon. He's used it in so many different things in the past. At the same time, him touching the weapon, he can channel his dad's thoughts and vice versa, as well as uh, he's able to really... Uh, uh, he, he can have uh, all the flashbacks and thoughts of everything that the knives were was used for by including like the pain, the deaths and so on. And why he can do that to a smaller degree Anna, who has the better connection can do it to the 10th degree, uh, which means that she can see uh, much deeper into the thoughts and it just affects her uh, even more strong than it affects him. So you do get, you, you know, they, they, they bring that aspect about also, like this, this, this weapon to normal people, such as Hastings, as he comes to find out, is that it's toxic. Being around it makes people sick. It is completely toxic in that nature that it just creates a bad vibe whenever it's around. And this is why the blood wanted it because they know it was a demon killer and that they were going to use it for Damon. And then they were going to use it for whoever, mother or even Anna. So, you know, they had to get it out of their hand. But as you can tell by the synopsis, there seems to be like maybe a little bit of confusion here for you all when it says like they have to go back to the childhood home to search for the old relic. Well, if they already have it, what are they searching for? That's because there's another piece to this that they go back looking for in this episode um, and going back to his childhood home where he buried it in a place that only he would know where it was at. And he had to get to it first before the blood did. So that's what's all going on here. Um, but there's a... Um, this this there's a lot that's going on here. Now we 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 go back to uh, mother, you know, being possessed by the demon. She's still caring for the uh, the other demon that was kind of you know <laughs> disintegrated. Uh, uh, Keith, who she's calling her son, and she says that they're waiting for someone else. Uh, so like, there's a bigger plan here outside of just her son and her. So um, yeah, the plot thickens on the demon side of things here. Uh, going to Anna, Anna is having a Jesus moment as she just as she uh, describes it, as she realizes that she's been toxic and she's been very negative, and she calls Damon to apologize for the anger that she's had over the past years. Um, so you know, we see Anna flip flopping with her personality again, and after the last episode, you can kind of put into perspective like she's been through a lot and she's finally realizing some things and she's again realizing where she's wrong so her apologizing to damon and damon actually 
saying that she was right about some stuff uh, was really a good sibling moment that they've continued to have all season. Um, with that being said, McGraw. Now, this is the name of a demon that we've seen as he allegedly, you know, part of the blood in human was the last person to be uh, to be possessed or to to be marked by the demon, which ultimately at some point he would be possessed. Uh, more to come with this. But at least we got a name here with this demon. So, you know, we'll see what happens uh, in the last two episodes. Uh, but Damon. We're seeing, uh, uh, sort of saying, again, as I said, we're, we're seeing him coming into full form. And right now, Damon has said that he is going to show everybody who he really is. And that's re- that's in regard, regardless if it means him channeling, you know, his dad's spirits. In, in other words, like, he's ready to show full display of his powers if he has to. And he doesn't care what anybody thinks. Because there's a lot going on. Again, they tried to kill him. Um, and then, you know, the tool is is so, like, uh, it's traumatizing to him. It's giving him PTSD because, he, you know, the, t- the tool marked him and gave him that engraving on his chest. And so him seeing it too and knowing that they the, what, how they were trying to use it, he's been pretty ticked off about it ever since. And surely, slowly, slowly but surely, surely... And surely enough, I can't even talk. He goes zero to 100 in this episode, and Gabrielle is in complete disbelief. Like, he goes full badass in this episode. And there's there's the one scene that's kind of, it will have your eyebrow raising because what he attempts to do is just, it's, it's completely uncharacteristic to what we've seen him do in previous episodes. Uh, because, you know, much like him and his sister dynamics, his sister shows no mercy, and he typically does, but that may all change in this episode, as you will see. Um, but, so Esther, who's the leader of the Bloods, who Damon tries to get to her attention by some of the things that he does, Esther is the one that we, that, number one, had kidnapped Caretaker, and number two is the person that we've seen him having that conversation with, um, in the truck earlier when he said that he was going to look for Anna. And again, she's the leader of the blood. So that puts into perspective, number one, who the leader is, the name, and kind of the intentions of it, uh, uh, of her. And, um, you know, kind of bringing that all full circle. Because again, in the earlier part of the season, kind of like, well, who's that person? I mean, obviously, we've seen her, but now we got a name. We kind of see her position and everything. And we kind of see, you know, her ill will towards the Hellstrom kids. And family, shall I say. Uh, but... At the same time, Anna and Luis, they have this plan to go after Mother. And it completely goes wrong, and it backfires. And what's different about this is that Anna actually wants to save Mother here. And that's a contradiction to her original feelings, but as you've seen, she had a Jesus moment. She she, she has a change of heart here. Uh, So uh, you have to kind of see how that plays out, because that goes crazy. That scene goes crazy. And on the same time... Damien and Gabrielle, they're still mingling and so on. But uh, while Anna has amazing news to tell Damien all oh, while they're mingling, um, you know, which I'm not going to not gonna spoil this, but like this, again, the last 15 minutes of this episode is nuts, which you just really got to see. Um, all that mingling gets put on halt for a second because, um, yep, there's a plot twist on like no other here. So... <laughs> So I can pretty much say for that. Um, but nonetheless, episode eight, I thought this episode um, definitely trending towards the uh, the epic finale within two episodes. So this one really piled on a lot of action. Um, it, it got us a, it got us into the last stride of this of this season uh, by adding this you know this really crazy twist at the end of this one. And um, I can't wait to get into episode now. So that means I'm gonna have to end this review so I can get back to watching. But nonetheless, episode eight underneath. I enjoyed this episode. Um, a lot of good things um, are still trailing off of all the, the building that it did with episode 7, episode 8, not piling on the action, and we're just all headed towards the finale in, in episode 10. So let me get to episode 9, and I'll see you there.